Good morning from North Carolina. We are going on an electric vehicle adventure today. It could be a big adventure. You see, we're gonna take this BMW i3 just behind me, which is one of the worst road tripping EVs there is, especially this one with the smallest battery. And we're gonna drive it all the way down to Columbia, South Carolina, where we're gonna drop it off. And then we are picking up an Audi e-tron, very exciting, and bringing that back up here. Now there's two problems. There are no CCS chargers active between here and Columbia, South Carolina, almost 300 miles away. Everything's under construction or getting ready to go online, but they're not online. The Audi only goes 200 miles. This has a little motorcycle engine in it that runs on gas, so when the battery runs out, we can drive on gas. However, that only does about 80 miles on one tank of fuel. I'll tell you a little bit more about how we've coded it to do more, but this could turn into a little bit of an adventure. You're wondering probably why aren't we just taking the Tesla that can go anywhere easily? Well, we need to have an adventure on out of spec motoring. Join me, let's go to Columbia, South Carolina in the BMW i3. So there are a couple settings that we need to get right in the i3, and I had mentioned that it has this little motorcycle engine that runs on gas, uh, and that's true. It, it's called the range extender, and it came from the factory with like a little 1.9 gallon tank, but we actually went through software and made that tank bigger, so it's 2.4 gallons not a huge difference. So we're running on 2.4 gallons here, and you're wondering why isn't it on right now? Well, the battery's fully charged. You're not able to turn it on until the battery gets down to 75%. So as soon as we get down to 75%, we're gonna kick on the range extender, another little modification we did. Normally it just kicks on when the battery is dead in the US cars. And let's just hope there's enough fueling stations and charging stations to get us there. <laughs> this could get a little exciting. I'm also going to select Eco Pro Mode, which should turn down the AC from working a little bit. And you know what? It's kind of nice out. We're just going to go Eco Pro Plus. All that does is bring in ambient air from the outside, and it limits our top speed, but I can drive past that. Oh, yes. Here we go. On the road to Columbia, leaving the Tar River and Rocky Mount as we jump on I-95 South to head down to Columbia, where there are no charging stations, DC charging stations between here and there that are currently online, and we're driving an electric car. Thankfully, we have that little motorcycle boost, and let's hope that little engine can get us there. They're really meant to be used just in a pinch. We have 248 miles to go. We are now merging onto I-95 South. This is where it gets real. We will see if we can make it. I've already dialed up a fuel station about 75 miles down the road uh, because there was a big gap after that. So Waze has cool technology where it will show you every gas station along your route. And in the I-3, it's really important to know where those are because even a 15 or 20 mile gap between fueling stations uh, will be the difference between running out of fuel and making it there. Because again, it only has a little two and a half gallon tank. So I've dialed up one in about 73 miles from here. We are still running on battery power. As soon as we can, I'm gonna kick on the range extender and that way we'll have the battery buffer to eat up in case we do run out of fuel. This i3 that I'm driving has adaptive cruise control, which is of course a really nice welcome addition. You can see I have it set to 80 miles per hour and we're following at 77. I can even put the distance to be closer. However, uh, we have done one very interesting thing with this car. You see here, if I push this little button, Boom. You can see now traffic jam assist is now on. Now this is only on European i3s and it's typically limited to I think like 25 or 30 miles per hour. 
but we had our software coder go up to, yeah, it just shut off, I'll explain. It go up to 99, which this car can't even go fast enough. So this i3 has basic autopilot, basically. It just keeps itself in the lane and at a distance. And oh, by the way, because it's coded, it never asks you to put your hands on the wheel, even though you should, because this is a very primitive system. But it does need to be following another car quite close. That's why it shut off when this guy moved in the other lane. But it's such a cool system because um, once we get that little steering wheel below that orange car on the screen, it will turn on here. It'll probably kick on here just a second as we're behind this car. Let's see. Yep, there it goes. And now, no hands. Just the I-3 going down the highway all by itself. Pretty cool. We're traffic jam assisting and at anything above 70 miles per hour, it kind of wigwags in its lane. And uh, yeah, it's really tuned for low speed. I cannot recommend anyone to do this, but it is kind of fun to push technology. Uh, you just really got to pay attention at higher speeds with this system coded to do it like this car. So once we get down to 75% state of charge and about a half a percent, as you can see, I'm going to select hold state of charge with this little rotary knob and that will kick on the little motorcycle engine and target that motor to hold 75%. Now that little motor cannot put out that much power, therefore uh, we will probably lose a little battery cruising at 75, 80 miles an hour. It usually can keep up with 75, but 80, not so much. We've selected hold state, the little gas gauge has now gone white, indicating that we're running on fuel, and now that little white triangle is also holding at 75%. So we'll see how well it can keep up with our highway cruise. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the little range extender is on and working. Uh, it's actually not working that hard, 74 miles per hour, it's keeping up just fine. I think maybe we'll bump it up to 80 and that thing will spin up some revs to try and keep up. But everything's so far so good, so easy, and what a beautiful day for a drive. Nice, crisp, 55 degrees outside Fahrenheit, sun's coming up beautiful really doesn't get better than this and the i3 I never really drive this car it's always a treat to get to road trip in it it is one of my favorite cars of all time I really think uh, BMW hit it out of the park with this thing from a design and engineering perspective I think it's perfect I know a lot of people think it's ugly I think they did a great job um, but they kind of stopped we need some more EVs BMW come on We have just pulled off the highway for our first fueling stop. We still have 18 miles of range. Normally I like to get it right down to the edge of the fuel tank, but the next fueling station was like 30 miles down the road, so we weren't able to make that. And the exit for the fuel stop was actually closed, so I went one exit down and now we're taking back roads up to this Circle K. And uh, yeah, just an adventure. It's you know part of the fun of road tripping in I-3 is just how compromised it is for this type of drive. Driving, but for city driving, we just plug it in at home, start every day full, and we never use the full battery of this thing ever driving around. So uh, it's fine for the two road trips a year, maybe this car goes on. I can see it off in the distance. There it is. Lovely petrol, nice fuel. Wish it was an EV charging station, but what can we do? None are online around here at all. It'll be interesting to see how we get this e-tron back home, but that'll be a problem for later this day. Road closed. Uh-oh, is Circle K not open? Let's see. I see some cars around there. This is the exit I was telling you about that was closed. But can we pull in? That's the truck entrance. Uh, yes, it looks fairly open. Let's hope so. Let's see how we're doing. We'll go all the way over here to these pumps. Yes, they seem to be operational. Very good. All right, let's fuel up. Please pay inside. I mean, come on. Uh, everyone says EV charging can be annoying. Well, so can fueling up. Why, is, why can't I just pay right here? 
Anyway, I'm gonna go pay inside, gas up, and we'll get on the road. We are all fueled up. It only took 1.8 gallons. And now what we need to do is go back to our little range extender menu and select range extender. You can see it lost 2%. We're at 73% right now. And uh, that's just because the little scooter motor back there was keeping up just fine, but it didn't keep up all the way, which is totally okay. So I expect us each fuel stop to lose a little bit. Now, if you're on a really long trip and that fuel extender can't keep up a lot with the battery and you keep wanting to hold the battery at a higher state of charge, so it's just working hard to keep up, what you can do is every time you stop, just get out the passenger side and it keeps the car on and it keeps the percentage hold at 75% or whatever you have it set to. That way you don't lose that percentage each time because after a few of these fuel stops and if you're driving quickly you'll be back down to the range extender holding the car at six percent and the problem with that is if you go up a steep hill and you only have six percent buffer sometimes that little scooter motor cannot keep up and you end up limiting power or getting power limit um, but yeah in this case we're just going a couple more fuel stops for the day this isn't that long of a trip for an i3 it uh, seems to be working out just fine we have nine 90 miles of predicted range on a full tank of fuel. Let's go. So our current plan is to get off of exit 22 off I-95 and we are going to get some Starbucks, of course, but also right down the street from Starbucks is the Electrify America station that is currently offline for upgrades. I did a whole story about this. They fixed the one closest to my house, no coincidence, I'm sure, but all the other ones on I-95 are still not yet operational. So we are going to see the status of that charger because if it does happen to be online and it's just not listed in the app, our Audi road trip problems are solved. And if it is offline, then I still don't know how we're gonna get this Audi back but I think I might have an idea I'll share with you when we get to the car. Let's go get some Starbucks and see if this station is online. We've gotten off at the Lumberton charger. Let's take a look to see what is going on here and there seems to be quite a bit of activity. That's kind of interesting. We have the new what appears to be Signet units going in. Yep, let's see how this is looking. Right, these are these are actually the uh, the same units that they've put in Rocky Mount now. They're great units, but not yet complete. Looks like it's almost done, but not in time for our road trip today, unfortunately. And also, it does appear that they're putting some sort of battery buffer storage in here, um, so you can see inside the cabinet on this one. Pretty cool. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, not quite ready to go yet. Oh well. Hello to the construction workers. Thank you for getting this online. Looks like it just needs a couple last connections finalized and then the station will be ready to go. Now we are going to Starbucks. Thank you. You need any napkins or anything? Uh, yeah, a couple napkins wouldn't hurt. I think we should go fill up with some fuel. Even though we have 26 miles remaining, we're already stopped. We'll just get back on the highway and cruise at that point. So let's go fill up the tank all right let's get this thing juicing we're gonna hit the fuel button down here it has to depressurize the fuel tank which is kind of interesting so refueling is now possible let's go put some fuel in it and less than five dollars later we are filled up Let's see how much fuel we have. The screen doesn't actually go like that in real life. Uh, we have 77 miles of predicted fuel. Let's throw it in drive. We'll set the range extender as usual. You can also program all of these things to hotkeys here. So it just goes instantly. And look, those are the Tesla superchargers. Those all work just fine. That's why we normally use our Tesla as our road trip car. Uh, but in the i3, fuel is pretty quick and good we, but we stop here often uh, when we're road tripping our Tesla so this is one of the old original supercharger locations but will not help us today because of course you cannot charge a non-Tesla 
at a Tesla supercharger. Let's jump back on the road. South of the border and there is Pedro. I remember going to this place as a kid. I pass by it all the time now. It's sort of dumpy now, but this was such an exciting place to stop on our family road trips down to Florida. All of this is just themed to be south of the border, Mexican style. I don't know, it's kind of funny. Uh, camp with Pedro, like just so weird, but such a cool thing. And unfortunately, I don't know if there's any saving it anymore. As usual, we gotta hit that little fuel button. And there we go, ready to refuel. Sometimes this gets stuck and there's a little tab in the front that you gotta pull to manually depressurize the fuel tank. But let's get this thing juicing up. We got our little thing right there. And now it's time we can shut off the fuel. You can see we have 27 miles to our destination and we have 40 miles of battery. So no reason to keep burning juice. I should say dyno juice. We're gonna go settings. Oh, I can just click one, can I? And then we're gonna turn off range extender. There it goes, it shut off. And now we're using just battery power only and we'll use that all the way into Nick's house. This is so beautiful around here. I did not expect this kind of neighborhood uh, here in this area of South Carolina. I mean, there's beautiful homes everywhere. Look at this fountain. That is pretty cool. I like it around here. I get it. Everyone's walking their dogs down the sidewalk. It's really a, uh, a nice spot. <laughs> this is beautiful. And Nick's going to pull out the e-tron. We've arrived in the i3, of course. What a cool trip down in this thing. It was great to experience the range extenderness. Uh, now, Nick also has this Model 3 Performance that is a dedicated track car for him. It's a really nice build on Martian MW03 wheels like we all use in our Teslas. Listen to the Audi pulling out. That sounds pretty interesting. And what a spec on this thing, too. Look at that. Love those 21-inch wheels. This is exactly how I would spec an e-tron. So sweet. And those brakes are massive, actually. And let me show you his Model 3. Look how good this thing looks. Lowered on some mountain pass brakes, Martian wheels, nice camber, interiors out of it, of course, because you don't need an interior for a track car. And there we go, we have some other EVs in the driveway. This is certainly EV heaven. And this is Nick. Everyone thank Nick in the comments for letting us borrow his Audi. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I'm not very photogenic. No, I like to be behind the scenes, but I'll do this. So what do you think Kyle. about me ripping your car around the track? Because we're gonna do that. The fact that I'm letting you have it obviously answers that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Thank you again. This is cool. And yeah. there are the keys. Yeah. And uh, I will give it back to you with a little less rubber on the tires. Okay, perfect. Yeah, rip it up on your track. And welcome to the inside of the beautiful e-tron. Nick's got smooth jazz. He's the kind of guy that would listen to smooth jazz. And uh, we have 206 miles of projected range. We'll see how that goes on the highway. But um, I'm gonna go through here, adjust all of my settings, and then we'll jump on the road. This one has the massaging seats, has adaptive cruise control, lane keeping, uh, really good. Nick says it's just as good as autopilot is. Um, yeah, wow, there's so many things to adjust, lots of buttons, absolutely love it. I love the way Audi builds interiors. You just cannot fault them for this. This is beautiful. So um, yeah, look at this leather dash here, it's really nice. Uh, let's get it all set up and we'll hit the road and figure out our plan home. Well, I've created my own profile. You can select so many of them. Look at all these profiles here. So now I'm able to select all of my options and it will not get in the way of Nick's stuff here, which is really good. So I can click. There's just so much to go through, which is great. I, you know, a lot of people like the Tesla systems for being so simple. I certainly do. Uh, but this is beautiful to be able to adjust so much stuff. So let me get my phone's Bluetooth connected, adjust all of my settings, and we're hitting the road here momentarily. All right, let's talk about our route plan on the way home. You can see we are here in basically Columbia, South Carolina. We have a full charge. The first charger we get to it is Electrify America Station that's under construction. You can see here going all the way up 95 to my house here in Rocky Mount, there is nothing and that's about 250 miles. We could stop at this particular station but it's a Harley Davidson motorcycle 
uh, dealership, of course, that does CCS for the live wire, and it's only 24 kilowatt, I believe, 25 kilowatt. So that's not gonna work. But this one, which is just off the highway a little bit, Sundu Quick Shop, this is a 50 kilowatt uh, unit right here that is one of the new charge point units. So I guess I could go up through Charlotte and around to home this way, or I could just detour a little bit down here to the Sundu Quick Shop and charge there. So I'm pretty sure that's where we're gonna go. It says it's a full 10 out of 10 rating, everything looks good. That's our plan, it's 133 miles to get there. We should make it no problem, let's go. I've selected our destination. We should be there at 4.30 p.m. or so, and uh, looks like we'll have a nice easy trip. I have my heads up display. I don't think you can see that guiding me. Everything's in range mode, and it's predicting 207 miles with the air conditioning running and my air conditioned, and uh, not my air conditioned seat, but I can do that, and my massaging seat active. The massage is great. We're driving an e-tron. I am so happy in this car. We probably will have to get Alyssa one of these things at some point. She's a huge fan. Oh, big bump. And it's just such a comfortable machine. So let's go home and uh, show Alyssa the e-tron. I know she's going to be happy to see this thing. Well, so far I have to say I'm just insanely impressed with the build quality, the noise, the refinement, the driving of this car. It is built like a tank. I literally feel like I'm driving a tank down the road. I love that bank vault feeling. Uh, and it's got so much tech as well. You know, a lot of Tesla owners don't like a lot of options and that's why Teslas are perfect. But you know, I'm a huge car guy. I love German cars in particular and I love the customizing options I can do on this car. I can choose, you know, how long I want the headlights to stay on after I get out of the car and, and all this good stuff. And I also have wireless Apple CarPlay. So it's doing CarPlay now, but my phone's right here, not plugged into anything. These are the little things that just the Germans do so well. And I am so impressed and always have been impressed getting an e-trons of just how nice they drive. And the, the turn assist is great. When you have cruise control on and you're making like a right turn, it just slows you down for the intersection. You make you t your turn and then it speeds you back up automatically. So it does a lot of cool tech and features that test Tesla doesn't even do, uh, and I've been extremely impressed with this car off the bat. Now, I've never road tripped an e-tron, so that's going to be one of the tests. See, look, we're coming up to a stop sign here. I'm not touching anything. It's slowing us down automatically. Will it go to a stop? Uh, I'm not going to trust it, but it brought us down to about 10 miles an hour. See, it says cross traffic. This car has <laughs> so much tech and it's pretty fast too. I can drop it down into sport. Now it's not like ludicrous melt your face off, but you put your foot into it. Yeah, it moves pretty good. <laughs> and that's just in like pure efficiency mode. So nice work. I'm really gonna love this drive and the massaging seats are lovely. We have now merged onto the highway. The car is pretty much driving itself. The adaptive cruise lane keeping is unbelievably good it's super smooth i'm very impressed with the driver assistance tech in this car and uh, we are just cruising dude 75 miles an hour i just popped it up over 100 allegedly and it is dead quiet and dead solid i mean the quietness of this car is the most impressive thing i think and uh, yeah we're just gonna cruise over to our charger sound system bang and olufsen is really good I am loving this thing. We'll see if the uh, charging infrastructure and range become a problem or a pro, uh, but I think on first impressions, the car itself is really, really nice. I could see us having one of these things. Absolutely, love it. You see, the e-tron's really heavy. This thing's like 4,000, 5,000 pounds. I'll put it right here. And you don't hear anything. It's got double-paned glass, glazed glass. It just is heavy, it plows through the bumps, but it's so solid. So I would say that this is a great representation here at the South Carolina National Guard to show how the e-tron is like a tank on wheels with adaptive cruise control and massaging seats. <laughs> Let's head to the Charger, off we go then. Rolling through these little small South Carolina towns similar to North Carolina, they're all kind of getting run down unfortunately you can see shops are kind of closing up and uh yeah sort of sad but um that's the state of a lot of these small towns 
As we continue our exploration around Lakeview, South Carolina, an unplanned one, but I like to look at these small towns, especially when I'm not in a rush. It's always fun to stop in and see what's around. Check this out right over here. I don't think I've ever seen a landscape that's looked like this before. Take a look. This is so interesting. You have water filling. Are these palm trees? I don't think so. This is such a weird and interesting look. It's like a lake but it shouldn't look like this, I don't know. And then here's the e-tron next to it, which is an incredible backdrop for this. I may have to take a couple photos. Look at that, isn't that something? And we are about to head back into our home state of North Carolina. It was certainly fun exploring uh, South Carolina by way of Audi e-tron in these little small towns, places I've never been. But now it's time to head back to home state of North Carolina and over to the DC fast charger just up the road here in about 15 minutes. Off we go, full power, pretty sweet. I just had to make one last little stop. Sorry for my hair, I definitely gotta get a haircut this week because look at this house behind me. This is crazy. It's, uh, we have not too many of these in North Carolina but it looks so abandoned and run down what a cool looking place. All right, we are, sorry, this is my last detour, having fun exploring around in the e-tron, and uh, let's head off. I apologize for stopping this video so much to show you some interesting things along the road. Here we go. All right, we got a steady st stream of traffic coming. Oh, maybe we can get a break in here. I should put it in S so we can get a nice little boost if we need the power, but no, we're good. And the charging station is just over here. I can see it right there and a uh, pretty good spot. We're just going to pull up and plug in. Nice of these guys to not ice the charger and uh, we'll get this thing juicing up. So before we run over there, I'm going to load up the charge point card right there and then I'm just gonna tap it to the machine and it will activate it. So let's get this shut off. We will tap the charge point card here. Just like that. That's all you gotta do to activate. Push this little button here. We'll flip down the DC port and then we'll get it plugged in. That's all we gotta do. Take this little port bring it on over to the car. You can see the top of it will rotate when I pull. It's the nice thing about these stations. And then we will just plug it in just like that. And we'll see if it charges. This is North Carolina. We got the squatted truck club right here. That's called the Carolina squat. Gotta love it. And uh, let's see, waiting for EV. Well, what you waiting for Audi? Come on. Let's see what it says in here. I've never DC charged an e-tron before. It says initialize. And hopefully we'll start charging. And there we go, it just heard some contactors click and charging in progress, worked on the first go. These charge point units are pretty nice. Now in North Carolina, uh, a lot of these are limited to 50 or 65 kilowatt. They can do more, but it's pretty hard to get the power in these rural areas. So. This one's limited to 50 kilowatt, for example. The nice thing about e-tron though is our pack voltage is quite high, so we'll be able to take advantage of much of that progress or much of that uh, charging speed. Let's get this thing on. Low range, 46 miles, I know. Okay. And let's see if we can see our charging speed though. So, zoom in here. Charging in progress. Uh, but how do we know how fast we're charging? There's gotta be a way. I found it, you just click this little view button, you get a whole menu that comes up. We're doing, yeah, 49 kilowatt at 25%. That's the benefit of high pack voltage. This thing can take a lot of juice uh, because uh, the amps are fixed. It's just pack voltage is right around 400 volt right now at 125 amp equals 50 kilowatt. So there we go. We're gonna let this thing charge enough to get back home. And uh, I think I'll run into the little convenience store and get a snack. I just ran into the store over here, got some water and of course some beef jerky and yeah, Doritos as well. But I think I'll save those for after I get home. 
and uh, absolutely loving it. This charger is working great, 49 kilowatts still. We're up to 35%. Now the e-tron can take 150 kilowatt charging, but this charger can only output 50. Now this wouldn't have been a problem probably tomorrow or the next day, whenever those Electrify America stations come back online from being upgraded, then we'd be I'd be home almost by now. Uh, but I had to take this little detour to this charge point because uh, those EA stations just aren't online. So we'll probably be here for another 35, 40 minutes. It is a long charging session, but again, only 50 kilowatt. And uh, that's fine. We'll just hang out. I'll get a little work done and then we'll be on the road home. We have been here for about 45 minutes, I guess. We're still doing 48 kilowatt at 80% state of charge, 158 miles projected, only 146 to get to our destination. I say we stretch it. Let's uh, let's go. I mean, look, we. Uh, I think we can make it. Shouldn't be a problem. I can always drive slower. That guessometer is based off of serious driving uh, speed because I ripped it over here. So let's see, it's cost us about $13 for 48 kilowatt hours, sounds reasonable. I think that's like, what, 27 cents a kilowatt hour, something like that. And um, yeah, I'd say pretty good. Man, this e-tron just looks so nice. I actually like the charge port in the front as well. I think that's kind of a nice touch. And so with that said, let's unplug from the charge point. I think it's a CPE 250 unit. We'll leave the little general store here and we'll be off to home. What a full day to collect this thing, but a super fun one. All right, time to rock and roll out of here. And before we do, this car has some cool features I want to show you really quick. Oh wait, I have to, what do I have to do? I have to press start, turn the car on, then reverse. There we go. Take a look at this. I can click this little 3D button and move this thing all around and you can see all around the e-tron. A lot of cars have this. I just always find it pretty funny. I've never actually found it useful. I just like the rear camera view that we are on there. So let's get going backwards. When you have the car in the efficiency setting like I do now, it's extremely uh, slow to get into the, the throttle. It's basically throttle tipping is very lazy. And that's just to save a little bit of range and jerkiness. But um, I can also click this left paddle to slow us down and it recognized that car's cross traffic that is pretty cool man this car's just got so much cool stuff oh also i was wondering what that smell was so i'm smelling this type of perfume and i was like what in the world i'm not wearing cologne why does it smell like that and i realized that in the settings in here you can select two fragrant fragrances fragrances what is wrong with me fragrances to come through the air vents and i have selected the summer fragrance and there's also a winter fragrance i haven't seen what winter smells like yet but summer smells like a jc penny catalog perfume not love and summer we'll have to try winter um, I've also set them set it to maximum strength. So I, I guess there are little cartridges somewhere It must run out of smell at some point uh, That is so weird. I've never been in a car. I've certainly smelled uh, Mercedes has these little samples that I have at my house. I don't know why I have them uh, But you can smell the smells that they put in their cars that you can choose uh, I haven't smelled Audi's smell perhaps we should get uh, some way to test smells and compare manufacturers uh, HVAC systems fragrances through their cars I, I don't know I think that'd be kind of hard to judge but so far Audi summer fragrance is not cutting it for me not loving that so much <laughs> well what a cool car to drive and just cruise around in it's got absolutely beautiful screens. This whole uh, driver assistant stuff is amazing. And it's just a great car to cruise in. And friends, our trip is effectively over. I'm here at the grocery store down the street from my house. Alyssa sent me with some tasks to pick up some tortillas and lettuce. Before we go though, I have to show you just a couple things in the e-tron with regards to lighting. So something Audi has done really well with this car is all of the accent lighting everywhere, even down to the seatbelt buckles, including the rear seat 
that are outlined in LEDs. That is so cool. Of course you can change the color, but I love this Tron style everywhere. I guess it makes sense, e-tron. This is Tron style lighting. It's absolutely beautiful. And this thing at night is gorgeous. And it's just as pretty on the outside. Let me show you. So when you walk up to your e-tron and click unlock on the key right here, look at this light sequence in the rear. How cool is that? And then of course, you have all this beautiful accent lighting everywhere. Up here in the front, it's just as pretty. Really cool lighting. It does the same sort of effect. So the headlight turn signals go. It takes about 10 seconds or so for these lights to turn off, but when they do, it's really cool. Um, while we're waiting, just as a huge thank you for you guys for following along on this trip. It was really fun to go collect this thing. I'm looking forward to doing some tests with it over the next week or so. It's going to be a really awesome car, I think. And this is the exact spec I like. White with the light interior. These wheels, I think this is definitely the one to have. Nice and comes to life gently. Love it. And uh, I will put you guys away in the car. Thanks for following along on this journey. We have Doritos. It needs a bath already. Bugs all over the windshield. But what a fantastic road trip and arguably a really good road tripping car. I think I have uh, 15 miles of range left or so right down the street from my house. So we timed it perfectly. Have a good one. <laughs>